Hello, welcome once again to Leto's Law. I'm Steve Leto. A uh, whole bunch of stuff. I got some mail, which I'll open on camera in a second. You may notice behind me there's stacks of books. Those are copies of the Lemon Law Bible. And I mentioned uh, a couple of videos back that this weekend, August 17th, is the Woodward Dream Cruise. Huge car event in southeastern Michigan. If you're in Michigan, you've heard about it. If you haven't heard about it and you're in the general region, look it up. It's a huge, huge deal. It's very, very cool. I go every single year. I've broadcast live from there a couple times for different organizations. This year, no broadcasting. I just drive around and be one of the people. <laughs> so I mentioned the other day, I said, well, you know something? Every time I mention it, people say, hey, I'll be there too. Why don't we meet up and shake hands? So I said, you know something? This year we'll do that. Now, I don't know exactly where I'm going to be. So uh, I might be down near 13 of Woodward, Northwood area. I've had several people tell me they'll be down at Mustang Alley. Uh, and then, of course, there's a bunch of my friends who hang out up at the Pontiac end because they've got a space, a big place that they can put their stuff and they got chairs and great seats. So I might go up there and hang out. We'll see. It depends. And, of course, I'm always looking for the friends of mine who I always bump into, like David Tracy uh, or Ryan Brute of uh, Cars and Barns and Auto Archaeology fame. So we'll see about that. But here's the deal. Uh, I'm going to be there. Uh, I will put out on Twitter. So check me out on Twitter, at Steve Leto, S-T-E-V-E-L-E-H-D-O, at Steve Leto. Uh, and I'll put out on Twitter where I am. Now, I might be, if I'm just wandering around, I might just have to tell you to log into my page on Garmin, and I will turn this on, turn the tracking, and I'll have it around my neck. And this is the same thing I use on my canoe trips. And you can go onto the page that I'll have the link to, and you can simply look, and it'll show you where I am. So I don't need to tell you where I am. You can look me up. So uh, I'll do that for about an hour or two. And all you have to do is find me. And as long as supplies last, and there's 50 of these here, so I, I think the supplies will last, okay? Walk up to me and just say, hey, Steve Leto. And you'll recognize me because I'll have this thing hanging around my neck. Uh, and I will shake hands, be glad to meet you. I'll sign a copy of this and hand it to you. No charge to you. So that's... You know, best of all worlds, right? <laughs> so what would be cool is if we get some selfies taken and if there's actually enough to make it look impressive, I might put together a few of those and do a after uh, video. Last year, I actually shot, and I'll put a link to it in below. I, I shot a whole bunch of uh, burnouts. And I'm not talking about the, the guys from uh, seventh grade who smoked early. I'm talking about the guys who spin the tires in their cars and, and, and get smoky, you know, burnouts off their cars. And I just cut a bunch of burnouts together. Two-minute video, three minutes, very, very short, but it's it's fun. Uh, and I filmed that and had a lot of fun doing it. So I might, I might shoot some stuff like that also while I'm down there. But again, I just go there to hang out and have a good time. But if you're down there hanging out and having a good time, why don't we do those things together? And like I said, you got an incentive. I'll give you a free copy of the book and I'll sign it for you. So I got to rem remember to bring a pen, but I'll do that. So now it's time to break out the Rapala. Uh, and I don't do this as often as I could, but from time to time I get mail and I go, you know, that looks like it'll be fun to open. So the first thing I'm going to tell you right now is this is an envelope sent to me from Australia. How do I know? It was in my mailbox like this. No, I'm just kidding. So uh, this is to Mr. Steve Leto Esquire. And you'll notice it says United States of America. And it has an Australian stamp on it that celebrates Anzac Day. And I'm pretty sure the NZ there stands for New Zealand. And I've got some good friends in New Zealand, so I appreciate that. But a gentleman uh, who goes by the first initial of S... In Palmerston, Australia, passed this along. So again, I don't know what it is. Uh, you're going to learn just as I am by opening up said envelope with my handy dandy Rapala, the Finnish knife. And so I'm opening this up, and um, there appears to be a pamphlet and a letter. Dear Steve, I would apologize for the state of my handwriting. However, as a loyal viewer, I understand there's no need. True, and this guy, this guy's handwriting is better than mine. As you can see, I've adapted to writing in all caps, a fact that probably single-handedly qualifies me to draft contracts professionally if I were to desire such employment. <laughs> in handwriting, it's not as bad. It's on the internet when people type in all caps that you think they're yelling. I'm writing as a token of appreciation for your entertaining and informative videos. Even though I'm here in Canberra, Australia, I'm fascinated by many of the legal concepts you address, and you'd be surprised at how similar many of our laws can be thanks to the British common law heritage that we share as nations, and that is exactly correct. A few months ago, I emailed you about my friend who had his truck successfully mutilated by fuel contamination 
And ever since I watched your video on it, I can say that I've kept every single fuel receipt just in case it ever happens to me. One of the earliest articles I ever wrote for roadtrack.com was about how you need to hang on to your receipts when you get fuel. Uh, you know, it doesn't happen very often, but once in a while you get a bad load of fuel and that helps out. Uh, and then he asks about a, uh, a legal question he has, which I won't get into here. And then he goes, after watching some of your uh, mail vlogs recently, I've gathered that the in thing is to include religious literature with correspondence. <laughs> In this spirit, I've included a printout about the religion I personally adhere to. Pastafarianism, I'm aware of this. Practiced by the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Yours faithfully, and his name is, in fact, Stephen with a V. And he signs it, P.S. Remember, Milo and Wolfie. And I appreciate that, and I always do. Thank you very much that you remember him also, or them also. And here it is, the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, touched by his noodly appendage. And uh, if you don't know about this, look it up. But um, there are people out there who have actually gotten their uh, driver's license photos taken while wearing the headgear of the church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Again, like I said, if you don't know about it, just look it up and you'll appreciate it. Uh, here is a letter sent to me from Coleman, Texas. Coleman, Texas. And uh, I get letters from all over the place. And he sent a very, very cool truck stamp. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. I like the way the post office has finally learned to play along and put up cool stamps. Uh, they did a series on Hot Wheels earlier this year, and I think last year they did a bunch of muscle cars. And one of them was the Dodge Charger Daytona. Like that. Really appreciate the fact that the post office has got taste. Uh, dear Mr. Leto, I attempted to send this as an email, but it was returned as undeliverable. See? Neither rain, nor snow, nor sleet, nor gloom of night, whatever the fourth one is. You might find this interesting, giving both the timing of the request and the need of government uh, the need the government professes to need in order to keep us safe. Um, and he talks about how the FBI now might be monitoring social media, and uh, of course that's scary. But um, he points out that the Constitution <laughs> sometimes doesn't mean a lot to people in law enforcement. So, uh, and that's from Arthur who passed that along. He sent me a link, which I will check out. Uh, unfortunately, I can't click on the link on paper, but I did get it, so I appreciate that. And I apologize if you had trouble getting something through, through to me via email. Um, I do have an email address at the end of every video, and I try to read all the emails, but I've had people tell me once in a while something gets kicked back, and, and, and my spam filters are not that aggressive, trust me. <laughs> I know, because I get buried in spam. But if it doesn't get through, I apologize. But, you know, print it out and mail it. I'd be happy to read that as well. Now, John sent me uh, a note, and he sent me a card of Toblerone chocolate. And I believe, I've mentioned Toblerone a couple times, and one of them, I think, was the woman who uh, burned through a lot of money, and they're talking about uh, what she wasted her money on. And at one point in time, she bought a lot of chocolate. And I had something, said something to the effect of, well, if it was Toblerone chocolate, chocolate, she could be forgiven. Toblerone is, in my mind, the peak of the chocolate world. Uh, there's other chocolates out there I like. There's other candy I like. But uh, Toblerone chocolate is the good stuff. He said, hi, Steve. This candy bar stops fascists. <laughs> no, really. Look up the Toblerone line, John. And, of course, um, he's, he's doing another reference there to uh, Woody Guthrie uh, had on his guitar, This Machine Kills Fascists. And um, uh, I have that sticker on the back of one of my books about the Italian Hall disaster because I visited the Woody Guthrie Museum and I picked up that sticker at the time. And I'm like, where am I going to put the sticker? And I'm like, oh, the same way his guitar does it, my book does it. So, And then finally, I got a package, which I'm guessing, based on its uh, squishiness, that it is not a letter. And I'm hoping it's a T-shirt. And I'll tell you why. Um... My t-shirt collection is now so voluminous <laughs> that it's to the point where, you know something, at this point, more t-shirts, just, it's like the trouble with tribbles. You know, it's just, it's just, I, I don't know where it's going to end, if it'll end, how it'll end. It might be that I wind up, you know, buried under a deluge of cotton in the form of t-shirts. That very well could be what happens to me. Um, but what a way to go. So there is an envelope here and I got to hold it up to light to make sure I don't rip the letter inside of it when I open the 
envelope. <sighs> I always, you know, I don't know why. It's almost like an OCD thing. I have a nervous habit. I always look inside the envelope like, did I miss something? I'm wondering if ever in my life I've seen something in there I missed. I don't think I have. I should learn to stop doing that. Steve, I was so impressed you wove one of my shirts in a YouTube video. I'm sorry, wore. What? That could be wove too. I got you one in a different color. Your YouTube videos are the best, and I learned so much. Sending you grand thoughts. Kurt. <laughs> and by the way, you don't have to send me more than one shirt, but you can if you want to. And bingo. Boulder, Colorado Rocky Mountains equipment and apparel since 1859, the original mountain expedition. And that's from Kurt. I'll run it through the dryer and I'll slap it in the uh, <laughs> into the rotation. You'll notice this is the first time today. This is the first time I've worn this shirt. Uh, and I was just up north and I was visiting friends up there. And I got some friends who own a company called the q and Adventure Company. Uh, and they rent kayaks and mountain bikes out of Copper Harbor, Michigan. So, you know, that's right up my alley. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I currently, I've mentioned before, I, I buy hangers by the carton and I have to order more because I'm out again. Uh, and I actually bought a rack for all my t-shirts and my rack ran out of space. So I bought a second rack for my t-shirts and that is now running out of space. There was, there was just a spike in t-shirtage, uh, in the last like 30 days or so. So I appreciate them all. I love them all. I decided to start pulling my personal shirts out of the rotation. That is the shirts that I owned before I started doing these podcasts. And so what it's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to work shirts that were mailed into me uh, into a higher rotation, as we call it in radio. Meaning that instead of your shirt that you sent me coming up once every 60 videos, maybe we can make it come up every 30 videos. <laughs> these are the problems that I contend with. But again, Lemon Law Bible. Woodward Dream Cruise, if you're in the area, follow me on Twitter. I'll tweet out the announcement saying, here's where I am. Come come find me. And I'll do what I can, if I can, to make it as accessible as possible, as many people as possible. Um, later in the evening, things can get very ugly and congested in certain spots. I'm thinking it'll be in the early afternoon, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, right around then. And like I said, you'll know me because, number one, you've seen me before. And number two, I'll be wearing this bright orange thing around my neck. So that's the way all that works. Love the mail. Keep it coming. Thanks a lot, people. <laughs> I can't express how good this makes me feel. When I go to the mailbox, I open up the box, and it's stuffed. There's a note from the postmaster saying, and you got more stuff in the other box, and it happens all the time. So questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye.